Hi, I'm Micah Ilberry, and welcome to Creating Compelling App Icons. In this talk, I hope to give you a better understanding of what makes a good icon and how to go about making those icons. Let's start with some introductions. Who am I? What do I do? And why should you listen to me? Well, as I said, my name is Micah Ilberry. I'm a designer, and most of the contributions I've made to Elementary and its community have been through icons. If you've been around this community long enough, you've probably seen something I've worked on, whether you know me or not. Anyway, enough of all that. Let's talk icons. Why are good icons important? And what makes a good icon? Well, let's start with why a good icon is important. And for that, we need to look no further than App Center. The front or search pages of App Center are the potential user's first impression of your app. If you, as you can see in the screenshot, even if you're in the What's New banner of App Center, the most information a potential user has is your app icon, your app name, and a short description of your app. So the first visual impression a potential user has of your app is your icon. If it's a bad impression, you may never get the chance to win them over further with screenshots or a longer description. You really want to make that first impression a good one. So. How do we go about making that icon that gives that good first impression? Well, for this, we can look at the Human Interface Guidelines, or the HIG, in the Iconography section. I'm not going to read the HIG word for word with you, although I do recommend you read it in its entirety, as it's a great resource. But I would like to show you an example icon I made for this talk, break it down, and explain the HIG as we go. Just a quick disclaimer. Before we get started, I want to make it clear that this won't be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use a specific program like Inkscape, as we just don't have enough time for that, and it's a little out of scope for this talk. However, most vector editors that can export SVGs should work. Also, unfortunately, there are no cheat codes for making icons. It's going to take a little time and a little practice, but if you're willing to put in the work, you'll be rewarded with a beautiful icon that gives that extra polish to your app. For our example, we'll be using this developer chat icon. Now let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's talk shape and metaphor. Let's start by taking a good look at your app and start thinking about what metaphor to work from. Choosing a metaphor is something that you're gonna to have to let your app influence. Does its name invoke an image? Does its function, what it does, does that invoke an image? Or even is your app interesting looking enough that the icon can be a little mini version of itself? The metaphor you choose should influence the shape of your icon. But whatever that metaphor you choose, you're going to want to make sure that your icon has a unique shape and silhouette. This makes your app easier to spot at a glance and makes it more memorable. Rounded squares and circles are great for some use cases, but definitely not all, and your icon is going to have a much harder time standing out when using these shapes. As you can see in our example, we're using a chat bubble shape, as opposed to a square or a circle. If we strip back all the details of the icon and use nothing but shape alone, you can see that its shape is unique and much easier to pick out of the lineup in the dock. And because we let our metaphor influence our shape, you can understand that the primary purpose of our app is to chat just by the shape alone. Next, let's talk icon sizes. For app icons, you really only need to worry about five canvas sizes, 16, 32, 48, 64, and 128 pixels squared. Each of these sizes are used in various parts of the desktop, so it's important to include them all. A mistake I see all too often is just making one of the sizes and scaling it up or down for the others, and I'm going to explain why that doesn't really work. Although SVGs are technically scalable, you're still working within the constraints of pixels on a screen. There's no such thing as a fraction of a pixel, so any edges or details that don't align to a full pixel, the computer is going to try and approximate and spread them out to the nearest full pixels. This leads to fuzzy edges and blurry details. To stop that from happening, we pixel fit our icons to each size. Basically, this just means recreating our icons at each size so it aligns to the pixel grid at all times. This keeps our icons looking crisp and recognizable. Let's look at this example. 
Here we have two sets of icons. On the first set, they've all been pixel fitted. And on the second set, only one size of the icon was made and then scaled down to fit the other sizes. As you can see that as we get smaller and smaller on that scaled set, the icon's edges and details get blurrier and blurrier until at the smallest size, we can't really make out what's going on outside of the context of the other icons. Whereas in our pixel fitted row, every size has crisp defined edges and better clarity all around. Here within these screenshots, you can see why the different of icon sizes matter and where they're used, like the dock, application launcher, app center, menus, and that's why we need to hint or pixel fit for each of them. Again, pixel fitting is just making sure that as much of the icon as possible falls on the full pixel and aligns to the pixel grid. Notice in this example how all of the edges, strokes, details, all of that aligns to the grid and sits in full pixels. Next, let's talk color. While you're free to use any colors you would like, Elementary provides a great resource in the Elementary color palette provided in the icons repo. This is the palette we use for the Elementary icon set, and it has a wide selection of colors and weights of colors, just like fonts have weights. When choosing colors, don't be afraid to use vibrant colors in your icon. This will make your, them much more fun and recognizable and memorable. Also, Elementary tends to save the more boring colors for more boring things like system level stuff. Another thing to consider when choosing colors for your icons is what those colors may say about your app. For instance, green can be associated with go, safety, or success. Yellow or orange with urgency or caution or warning. And red with error, danger, or alert. We can use these colors to help convey a message or a feeling. This doesn't necessarily mean you should be confined to or avoid certain colors, but it is something you're going to want to think about. Next, let's talk measurements and exceptions. Although the canvas of our icon are the 16, 32, 48, 64, and 128 pixel squared, our icon doesn't extend to the full edges of those canvases, and there's space left for the icon to breathe. The HIG provides us with a set of measurements for a rounded square icon that gives us the baseline, X height, and mean line height. These are a great starting point for the general size of your icon. However, these aren't set in stone, as we're going to need to accommodate for an optical illusion that makes some shapes feel smaller than others at the same size. I call this visual weight, and we want to make sure our icons are the same visual weight as other icons on the OS. In our example, our icon has a similar visual weight as a rounded square, so it follows these measurements. However, if our icons were more round or a different shape altogether, we may need to extend the size of our icon to remain visually weighted the same. Next is outlines and contrast. Outlines help to give your icons contrast on a variety of backgrounds. We achieve this outline by giving our icons a one pixel semi-transparent outer stroke that's roughly 30% darker than the icon's background. With parts of the icon that are very bright nearing white, we use that one pixel stroke to contain those parts rather than sit partially on them. Here we can see the difference in contrast on a background between icons with an outline and those without. As you can see, the icons with an outline stand out much better than those without. Next is lighting. Lighting is an important factor in the creation of our icon and one that's easily misunderstood. Lighting is why our icons use gradients, have highlights, and cast shadows. Lighting is what grounds our icon in a degree of realism. Understanding the lighting will go a long way in understanding the process of making an icon. Imagine your icon was sitting on a shelf with a light directly above it, like in the top left image. This explains the soft drop shadow and edge lighting around the icon being brightest at the top. The material of your icon, along with the lighting, will influence the gradients you use to make your icon. If your icon is glossy, your materials will have brighter reflections, and so your gradients will be harsher. Likewise, if your material is matte, you'll have a much softer gradient. Next, let's talk about highlights. 
Highlights act as edge lighting and consist of a one pixel inner stroke on the edges of the icon and anywhere light would catch like seams. Our highlights will be brightest at the top and slightly brighter at the bottom than the sides as light would bounce up from the shelf our icon sits on. The amount of transparency of this white inner stroke really depends on the color and material of the icon below it. In the top right image there, you can see I've taken our icon, stripped it of the details, and exaggerated the highlights so you can more easily see what's going on. Next is shadows. Because the light is coming from the top, our icon will cast a fuzzy drop shadow underneath itself. The shape of your icon's shadow will depend on the shape of your icon. In our example, the bottom of our icon comes to a point, so the shadow is much more intense towards the center, and is much softer as the, e as the edges of the icon get farther and farther away from the surface it sits on, as shown in that bottom left image. Next, we want to talk about material. When creating details and gradients in our icon, we need to think about the materials our icon is made of. Is it more glossy or matte? If it's glossy, it will reflect more light. Let's look at our example in the bottom right. Here we have two different materials, glass and metal. Because glass is super reflective, we have a glare on the screen portion of the icon. But the sandblasted metal part of the icon is more matte, so it has no glare and a subtle gradient. Next, let's talk about pictograms. If your icon has a pictogram, you can give it shadows and highlights to make it appear extruded from or inset into the background. This gives our icon further depth and gives the pictogram more contrast against that background. To make an outset shadow, we start by duplicating the pictogram, making it solid black at 15% opacity, shifting it down one pixel and sending it behind the image. Next, we duplicate that shadow again and give it a one pixel stroke and set it 7% opacity. This will give a subtle drop shadow to your pictogram that makes it appear slightly lifted from the background. To make a pictogram appear inset into the background, we basically want to make that same shadow, but inside of the pictogram. Start by making your pictogram a darker shade or gradient of the icon's background. Then we duplicate it twice and shift it one of those duplicates down one pixel. And then do a difference path cut. Make it black at 15% opacity. Duplicate the original pictogram twice again and this time shift one of the duplicates down two pixels and do a difference path cut. Make it black at 7% opacity. Now duplicate the original pictogram once more and make it white. Shift it down one pixel and send it behind everything and set the opacity to match your highlights. You should now have an inset pictogram with, shadow and highlight, with shadows inside and a highlight underneath. Next, let's talk about composition. Another thing we need to consider when creating our icons is the composition. If you plan on adding more elements to your icon than a pictogram, you're going to have to consider how much detail to put in. Too little detail and your icon will look boring and have a hard time conveying its message. Too much detail and your icon will look too busy and won't scale well. However, this doesn't mean that all your elements need to be the same or present at all sizes. You'll need to find that line and understand how and where to change or cut out some of those features as you scale down. The trick is to only cut or change elements that don't define your icon. This shouldn't discourage you from adding details as your icon to your icon, however, as more detailed icons or are the most interesting. Let's look at our example. Here we have a pictogram of braces and some lines in the back that look like code on a screen. It would be impossible to scale that code down to smaller sizes and have it look exactly the same. So as we go down in size, we recreate the detail to fit our icon size. Until at the smallest side, the code was indistinguishable. So we just removed it altogether. We can't remove the pictogram because it's a defining feature of our icon that conveys our icon story. However, the code is just background detail that adds more context to our icon, but doesn't define it. Now I want to show you a demonstration of an icon being made and talk you through what I'm doing as we go. First, we're going to start out by making our rounded square, the same rounded square we all know and love. Here I am setting the measurements and centering it onto the canvas, giving it the right correct border radius. 
And now we're going to work on our, our highlights, our inner, our white inner stroke highlight. As you can see, we're aligning all of it to the pixel grid and keeping it, keeping it inside those full pixels. Next, we're going to work on what's going to be the point of the bottom of the icon and its inner highlight. Next, we're putting it to the bottom of that square because we know that's where our measurements are going to be. And now we can work on making our base shape, our chat bubble shape. I'm going to do a union of the background and the highlights. And there's our base shape. You can see we have a one pixel outer stroke for the outline and a one pixel inner stroke for the highlights. Next, I'm going to work on the highlights for the seam. Now we're duplicating the original base shape so we can separate it into its parts, the metal part and the glass part. Now we're going to set our gradient for the screen, for the glass part. Now we're going to separate our outer line and set it to the right opacity and color. And then we're going to do the same for the metal part or the bottom. And we're going to give it its gradient. Now we're going to bring out those highlights to the front on top of everything and start setting them to the right opacities. We're going to put a gradient on that, on the main outline so that it can be brightest at top and a little brighter at the bottom and dimmest at the edges. We're going to set the opacity to match and work on making sure everything aligns in a full pixels. Next, we're going to make that glare on the screen. This just gives a little extra detail and really emphasizes that that top layer is made out of glass. Next, we'll bring in our pictogram position it in the right place and start working it and making it outset. So we're going to duplicate the pictogram, bring it down one pixel, set it to black at 15% opacity. Then we're duplicating that, giving it a one pixel black stroke and setting it all to 7% opacity and sending it behind it. There it is. Now I bring in some other details. And we'll send those to the back at the end. Now we're going to work on the shadow. As I said, our shadow is more intense towards the center as we have a point that comes down. So we're going to have to layer up our shadows a little bit. 
So here I am making towards that point. I'm making the shadow there. And now we're going to make the shadow for the edges of the icon. This is going to be a much more subtle shadow as the icon is farther away from the surface. Now we're going to set that outlines transparency and send our details to the back. And we're done. I hope this has been helpful for you in understanding how elementary app icons are made and you're leaving this talk with a better idea of how to go about making your own. Thank you for your time and I hope you have a great rest of EDW. Thank you. Wow, that was a great talk and a handsome icon, I'll say. I'll click that app, whatever it is. Now we're lucky enough to be joined live by Micah and Tan for some Q&A. Micah, thank you so much for putting that together. That was so cool to see you like working. I think a lot of people haven't really seen that behind the scenes before, right? But to see like the way you snap things into place and going from just like a rectangle to something that was like a great icon was really cool. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> And thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So uh, a lot of people are asking, like, what tools do you use to draw icons? Uh, I use Inkscape. Um, I use the flat hub version of Inkscape. Uh, but honestly, you can use about any tool that you're comfortable with. But um, as long as it does SVGs. But my personal tool is Inkscape for now. Uh, after the Akira talk, I'm 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 looking at that like maybe <laughs> maybe I need to learn that. But <laughs> what about uh, before you jump into your illustration software? Do you do any kind of like brainstorming with sketches or any other tools like that, or do you just dive straight in? It depends on the icon and what I whether I have a good idea for it or not. Sometimes I'll grab a notebook and just start sketching things because it's sometimes a little quicker than just hashing it out on on Inkscape but um yeah it depends sometimes I just hash it out on Inkscape because I'm pretty comfortable with it <laughs> yeah yeah it definitely seems like a comfort level thing right I totally do the same thing like sometimes I'll jump into the notebook but other times I'm like man let's just see what happens yeah what about uh, during like the research phase do you like spend a lot of time looking at you know other kinds of icons or doing some like you know yeah. things like that yeah, if there's a icon that's got a little more difficult of a metaphor, I'll research on prior art and, you know, what are other people saying represents this idea or this this message that they're trying to convey. Um, and I'll use that to help shape what I'm doing. And yeah, there's there's a little bit of research into it, especially especially for the metaphors. And uh, if there's something more complex that I'm trying to get across, like light a certain lighting or something, I'll I'll look at resource images or and things like that to see what real lighting works like. Yeah, and you talked about um, use of color a little bit in your talk, right? And do you uh, think a lot about like kind of color theory concepts when you're trying to pick out the colors for your icons? Yeah, uh, I definitely think about what that color is going to say about the icon. Uh, is it going to come across as a negative thing or a positive thing? Is it, and I, I, I like to think about going into the operating system and thinking where colors are used in that. Like I know orange is used for mu the music app. Is this something musical does, can, would orange benefit from here or, um, the system settings we use purple for sharing and does that, uh, do, would that benefit by being purple here to keep a consistent theme going on of what, what does the message convey? Yeah. That's a really good point is trying to keep things in like kind of icon families, right? So they all feel mm -hmm. grouped together. Um, let's see. Alessandra wants to know if you have recommendations or best practices to uh, speed up the process of making different sizes of icons. Yeah. Um, don't be afraid to kit bash. <laughs> so I don't, I rarely ever do I start from scratch on 
on an icon. I will grab an icon from the operating system and work from it. If it's close to the shape uh, or whatever, then I can work from that and that solves some of the sizing things that solves some of the some of the highlights and things like that it's it's beneficial to work from a starting point so there are templates you can use there are um that you like i said you can just go into your icons from the operating system and grab something that's similar there and yeah don't feel like you have to start from scratch every single time yeah, and I know you put together a great template pack, and we recently started linking to that from our developer docs to get you started with some place of your icons, right? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, it's a little a little different right now because we started doing some experiments with uh, with shape, <laughs> so and border radius. So it's a little different from the what's shipped now, but maybe in future it'll be back at the bar i might make a make a go i might revert <laughs> <laughs> um so what about uh what do you think is the best size to start designing your icon from should we start like at the maximum size up at 128 or should we uh start at a smaller size and scale it up i typically start somewhere in the middle so i usually start at 64 or 48 pixels um that gives me a base of what what detail I can fit in, what detail I can add, what detail I can remove. Like that gives me a good starting point of where to go. And it, it might be different for everyone. Um, maybe you really need to know what it's gonna look like at its smallest size first to really wrap your head around what it's gonna look like at the bigger sizes. Or maybe you need that full that full 120 pixel to really understand what it's going to look like across it, it. It's a personal preference, but I like to start somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I got a cat right here. <laughs> oh, okay, come on, bud. Okay. <laughs> and what about, uh, what do you think about like, um, someone wants to know, do you think that we're going to have like really huge icon sizes in the future? Like what, should they plan to scale their icons up to like 256 pixels or something large like that? Um, I don't think so. Uh, we're the bigger icon sizes are usually high DPI usage. So, and those are pixel doubled. So the si the same sizes will look the same way on high DPI. You don't need to make a 256 pixel icon for high DPI. You can make the 128 pixel and it'll scale up, um, because it's pixel doubled. Um, don't want to, don't want to confuse that scaling happens just <laughs> magically uh it's because of pixel doubling but um it depends on where we go for the ui we 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 pick icons that fit a specific use case in the operating system so uh i don't foresee anything right now but that could change in the future and uh, what about like your alignment? It looks like um, sometimes you have shapes that are aligned like to full pixels, but when you're adding a stroke that sometimes they get aligned to like half pixels. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so I use a grid of a full pixel and a half pixel grid um, because when you're aligning things, you want them to fit in the full pixel. So the center of it may end up on a half pixel or the alignment the snapping point might be on a half half pixel. So I fit, uh, I put a half pixel grid so that I can align and it sit inside the full pixel. But yeah, so when you've got like a shape right with a stroke on it, that the the snap point for that shape might be on a half pixel, even though the stroke fills up like the whole pixel, right? Exactly. Yeah. What do you think about uh, like trends in icon design? Like we've seen a ton of trends come and go over the last like 10 years, right? Like we've had hyper realistic icons. We've had the white backgrounds with plain colored pictograms on them, long shadows. Like what, first of all, what, what is your favorite one of these trends? <laughs> So or least favorite, <laughs> my least favorite is the white background with a pictogram on it that it just makes everything really hard to find. Um, my favorite 
it's not practical, but I, I, I have a soft spot for the hyper realistic ones. Uh, but I think where we sit is a nice balance between having some grounded, like being grounded in some realism with some real lighting going on and not being too flat, too undetailed. Uh, because I think flat icons are a trend. I do think they're a trend. And I think that we're going to start seeing, and I think we are seeing more shadows, more depth, more lighting come back into, into icons as we get further along. Um, I think we're on the upswing from that. And so, uh, I think we sit in a good spot. I, I don't like chasing the trends. I like sitting where I, we have a reason we sit where we sit, you know, we are grounded in a little realism. We're grounded in, you know, we have that, that depth and that, that shadow and things that really help separate us from the background and and give us more contrast so i'm not a trend chaser but i i I do see the trends and my favorite are the ones that add more detail my least favorite are the ones that take it all away (laughs) well that's awesome i really appreciate you coming on and answering all these questions there are a lot of great uh questions in the chat but we got to get rolling with the next talk so thank you very much oh thank you for having me